Welcome back to our final segment of Chamber Exchange, the TV show. Again, I want to thank our sponsors, Bank Hometown and the Worcester Railers Hockey Club, who are got a number of home games coming up at the DCU Center. So for some great hockey in a family-friendly environment, uh, get down to the DCU Center, see the Worcester Railers. Uh, we had a lot to get in that last segment, but thankfully we've got an, another segment. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, Hamid Mahagi's redevelopment of the North Works building, the history, Washburn Moan, American Steel and Wire acquiring it. Uh, generations and tens of thousands of people employed there in the manufacturing. Right. But now a hub of 80 plus businesses, opportunities for expansion and uh, of either housing or businesses into the Commonwealth Station building, uh, creating a village, a gathering place for, for, for visitors, for WPI students, other people from Worcester. But a keystone piece of that, uh, your daughter Nilu, uh, a product of, of Central Mass, uh, was out in the West Coast and this is a sign that Worcester and Central Mass is moving in the right direction. We're bringing back great talent <laughs> and, and, and uh, well-educated uh, young people back, uh, coming back home. Neil, wh wh why don't you talk a little bit about yourself and your experience and kind of what brought you back and, and, and your work in bringing a second fuel cafe? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having us here. I'm excited that we can share all that's happening. So essentially, I, I went to Boston University. So actually, maybe take it back to Worcester. So born and raised here as dad mentioned kind of the last segment I went to Bancroft school for high school actually K through 12 so I was there all the way through yeah. um, and then I went to BU to study business so I actually studied with a marketing concentration while I was there I found a passion I always was into music when I was younger and so played the piano I sang but I always really wanted to get on the creative side of it I loved events and I loved experiences and kind of the specialty you can create with spaces so the way like concerts kind of provided that for people so mm -hmm. I actually started a music business club at BU and we started managing artists in the city. I founded it with a bunch of friends. Um, it was a really cool opportunity. I was a music journalist, so I did concert photography and interviewed artists all throughout Boston, um, all four years. Um, and then I ended up actually after graduating, so I did a bunch of internships in music with like Sony Music and uh, RCA Records and stuff mm -hmm. and really found my, my passion in brand development with an artist. Um, and I moved out to LA after doing my master's at BU as well um, in media ventures, which was kind of creating your own business and disrupting the entertainment industry, kind of like the Spotify's, the Netflix's and all that. So yeah, it seems like it changes day to day. <laughs> yes. New products and <laughs> how do you keep up? New degrees. So I ended up moving out to LA um, and I started working at AEG Presents, which own and operate venues across the world, which was super cool to kind of be this cornerstone. They do music and sports. So they like own stadiums across the world. And I was doing digital advertising for them and all their global tours. And especially because I was the only East Coaster on the team, they had me assigned to the Bowery Presents, which is our own local like Boston venue operator. So it was really nice to be kind mm -hmm. of feeling like I was home even in LA and the West Coast. And then the pandemic hit. And of, of course, concerts took a hard hit with the right. pandemic. So we were all furloughed. And so during that time, you know, dad and mom were like, come home, you need to come see us. Yeah. You're working from home, might as well be with us. So I flew over during the pandemic and kind of in the works of that, while I still had some time, I was helping out my dad with the building, doing some marketing and just coming up with ideas as he was brainstorming the visions. And along the way, there was a space on the basement floor that was empty. And he was telling me he had visions of doing something with that floor. And I had worked as a barista all throughout my college years. I really loved coffee shops. And he knows most of my tuition probably went to coffee <laughs> shops. So I definitely spent most of my time because again, the love for spaces and environments and kind of that atmosphere that coffee shops provided, that communal gathering was really a right. big passion of mine. So I ended up telling him, I said, I think a coffee shop would be pretty cool to have in that building that you have because you have so many cool people there. Right. You have amazing right. businesses. You've got the students all over with Worcester being, you know, this amazing hub of the youth and now this new evolution of Worcester. Thanks to Tim. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> a lot of people working hard. Oh, I the glue home. for all of it. <laughs> yeah, I came home and I told dad, I said, I drove, took a drive through Worcester when I came back home and I said, when did all of this get here? I had been so far removed from Worcester for, mm -hmm. I guess, a good number of years after being in Boston for a while, then LA, I right. never really explored. And I got to help out on some of the movie sets that were getting filmed in Worcester too. So I got to see Worcester in a whole different light. Like it was mm -hmm. really cool to see what had happened to my hometown. So I kind of told my dad, I really want to help him with his vision of giving this city a boost and really helping them thrive. And I think that seeing all the youth here now, like how excited they are, people coming from other states to Worcester, like, it just really makes me happy to see that. And so you've, you've were able to get a coffee shop, you, you know, fuel, uh, uh, fuel coffee, downtown first kind of franchise, one of the first in Massachusetts. Uh, you you had the first one, the first franchise for them. First yes. franchise, yeah, first franchisee mm -hmm. uh, uh, beyond their, in their Worcester. So, incredible space. 
I mean, what you've done, the cobblestones repointing into the inside, but just even the opportunity to come outside and do events. Yes. I, I mean, people have got to see it, but talk about your, your, your just a soft opening. Yes. People can come down, coffee, everything else, yes. beers. T t yeah, talk about absolutely. That. So yeah, we are open now, so definitely people should come on by. I have an amazing team of a lot of the youth that are in the Worcester area, which again, like kind of talks about how excited I am for all these young kids here. Um, but. So the coffee shop, we bumped into Fuel. When I told my dad about the coffee shop idea, we were we made my little brother did some research and found a bunch of roasters in Massachusetts because mm -hmm. we wanted to work locally. So we were trying to meet with people and one of our meetings was with Carlos and Jeff, the owners of Fuel America, and they had told us their idea and their vision and the whole point of it being about the melting pot of America was kind of right. their story. And we loved that, especially coming from, you know, dad's mm -hmm. background and mom's background. It made a lot, it resonated with right. us a lot. So we really loved what they had created. And, you know, they told us that their dream was to franchise. So we really were excited about that. And we said, yes, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So and they've been nothing but a pleasure to work with. It's really been about family. And I mean, I think also my dad's mm -hmm. pharmacy is being called family pharmacy. Our biggest value is family. And, and the real estate company is family grounds. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> so family is in everything. And so we really do value that. And even with my team right now, I let them know like we are a family here. We have one goal and vision. So this coffee shop now with using that space, we're hoping, you know, outside we'll create these event spaces outside with the string lighting and maybe a farmer's market and the whole basement floor aside from the coffee shop, we're hoping to create this cool marketplace with a bunch of boutiques and local produce and all that kind of stuff. Like just a space that people will come and gather and find their home away from home is really the so point. So hundred plus businesses uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, to add to the 80, uh, just a minute or two left. So the coffee shop, yeah. food, beer, you've got some function space, yes. and then when the weather turns nice, which is not too far off, uh, uh, ability to do some really nice stuff outside. Yeah, and I've yeah. had a friend of mine who's a muralist, and she did some murals outside in the courtyard that really added, again, becoming from the entertainment background, art and creativity is a big focus for me, and I want Worcester to really, I know we have Pow Wow Worcester, which is amazing, and I want to really elevate and encourage that, that group of people, the artists in this city, because I feel like, you know, we are great in the medical space, and I think there's still room for the creativity to come yeah. out well, as well. A big part of the, the you know, Worcester's resurgence in the region has been our arts and culture. Just, uh, but in the middle of that beautifully repointed and uh, uh, cobblestone and every a fountain as yes. well. A fountain. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, that that's a take from uh, Europe. Uh, we have a villa in southern Spain, and every time we go there, it's so vibrant. Uh, people gathering, having food and uh, yes. drinks, and enjoying the, the, the atmosphere there. So uh, we just try to recreate that like we'll do that too. Italian uh, village or a Spanish village. So, uh, Got it. Yeah. 100 Grove Street, a lot happening. <laughs> Fuel now. Uh, get there. Uh, so Hamid and Nilo Mahagi, thanks for being with us. Get thank down uh, to our viewers. Get down there. And thank you for joining us for this uh, action-packed edition of Chamber Exchange, a TV show, and our sponsors, Worcester Railers and Bank Hometown. <laughs>